Today it's D-Day or pickup day for us, so we're actually just sitting in the car park waiting to go pick up our caravan, uh, just waiting for the time to come round, uh, but it's been a long time in the making. It's been 18 months, yep, hasn't it? 18 months, yep. So when did we like... We ordered it in February 2021. So February 2021. And then we were promised that we were going to get it uh, before Christmas last year, so November, December. 21. So that, that didn't happen. As you know, there's lots of shortages and COVID and whatever, you name it. There's all these things going on in the world. So they actually got pushed back to April. Yep, around Easter time. Uh, so it's been this process of waiting and waiting and pushbacks and pushbacks. And then April came around and then uh, Crusader actually came up with a full composite van. Um, so they started offering that out to, to people for a little bit of an extra fee. Um, so we decided to take that up to have a fully composite van that has better insulation and, and all that as well so uh but here we are in december so <laughs> it's been a while to get to this point so you probably notice we don't actually have kids in the background today um because they don't know either nope. no so idea. it's been 18 months of this secret that we've been holding from our kids and they've got no idea that we're going to pick up the caravan today so um today we're going to do a pickup handover uh, get to know the van. We've literally got no idea what we're doing with a caravan. So it's got new. all these mixed emotions from anxiousness to excitement to fear. I don't know, you name it. We've got this whole <laughs> range of emotions uh, going on. So uh, it's it's nearly time for us to go do our handover. So we'll, we'll probably show you a round of the van, um, show you a bit of the handover and that bit of a process there. So let's get into it. Bye. So we've just come back from our maiden trip and I guess we've had a little bit of time now to process everything that's gone on from that day. So we've got some notes here. There was a lot to kind of take in. So we've got it all kind of written down and hopefully we'll get through uh, all of it. So just want to let you guys know that we're, we're not sponsored by anyone or any brand uh, in this video and basically paid for everything out of our own pocket. So um, in return, we'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so we could keep doing more of these videos. So I just want to talk about a little bit of the sales process in general and, and how we found that. So um, like we said earlier, it's 18 months for us for this whole entire journey. Um, and there's been lots of delays and so forth and lead times going out. But uh, it's one of those things that it is what it is. Uh, that's just what's happened, and it's industry know. wide. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, so it's just it's just one of those things. Like, there's nothing we can do. So it did take 18 months, but um, big thanks to Crusader Newcastle. So um, they've been pretty good. There was not a real lot of communication letting you know where everything's up to. Um, so in that whole process, is you get your delivery date, and then it comes close. You don't hear anything. So then you're constantly chasing them up and finding out. Um, Karen over at Crusader Newcastle, in the end, she was, she was brilliant. So when it came close to our date, she'd actually let us know, 
you know, the date's still there, the date's not changing, and in the end, she's, she goes, she started writing little notes in her diary to kind of contact us uh, on weekly, because it was, um, you know, she never heard anything, but we knew the date was there, so, uh, yeah, Karen was, was fantastic over there um, in helping that process, and she's probably your first point of contact anyway, when you ring Crusader directly, so be nice to her, she probably cops a bit of flack over there as well, um, but yeah, Crusader Newcastle, I, I guess through the process, has been pretty seamless for us um, through that there. So I guess now we'll just talk about a little bit of the handover process. So, you know, I don't know, what are your thoughts on the handover process? Uh, they were telling us two to three hours and I thought, oh, it can't be that long, but it is that long and you need that long. Um, we've never had a caravan before and it is different to having a camper trailer. So I think allow that time and really take it in because... Um, it is worth spending the time to, to just go through everything, I think. Yeah, I thought we'd be in and out, quickly hook it up, and then we go. But there is quite a bit there that we just didn't know. A lot of the stuff we did know as well, but things like awnings and, uh, I guess, uh, what is it, the water pump switches and all that type of stuff was kind of kind of new to us uh, in that respect. So it, it did take a, a bit of time there. So um, And I think because it has been so long since we purchased it to... You know, we were going to trade shows and having a look around for a long time, and so we were familiar with it all. But being so long in between, it was good to actually spend the time and actually go through our van. Yeah, so it's um, it's a lot to take in. So you know, we tried filming a lot of it, uh, but you just there's just so much to take in. Uh, even then, like trying to sit there and test every single thing uh, on the van probably also was going to be a little bit difficult as well. Uh, so hence the reason why. Uh, I guess we, in the end, we decided to do our little shakedown trip, uh, and we actually took it to Umina, which is probably about an hour hour away from there. So, the NRMA park at Umina, that, that's a brilliant park. It's it's huge. It's right along the beach. Um, there's like multiple pools and slides, and one's heated. So it's it's a really cool, you know, jumping pillows, playground, you name it. Basketball like the, courts. Yeah, the yeah. park's got it. So. I guess when we first got there, we just parked up the van, which uh, I guess that's also a little bit daunting, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> first time. Um, parking it being such a large thing, uh, or a large van, which is something we've never towed before. So even then, that was a little bit tricky, um, you know, the weights and so forth in it, and the little wobbles and shakes, you know, you kind of feel just kind it's of... different. Yeah, grab your nerves, but I, I'm pretty sure it's all normal. Um in that process so you know but yeah you mind a park great great park for us to do it so basically when we got there kids went out and i don't think we saw them we didn't see them yeah like while we're setting and playing and getting used to everything kids just went out and played so um it's a brilliant brilliant park over there so beginning of it we actually said that we tried to surprise the kids yeah um how did that go yes and no <laughs> <laughs> our plan didn't quite go go the way we wanted to um, so yeah, the kids were with their grandparents and so we wanted to drive up and each year we do a, a bit of an advent calendar and so their first was on December 1st, so we thought we'd start it, um, by introducing them to the caravan, but lo and behold, we pulled up and the one night that we get there, they were out the front playing and so yeah. <laughs> they kind of busted us as we were coming up so the street. So coming up the street, recognise the car and we just froze and go, do we go, do we not go, tried to pull over. Yeah. In the end, the kids seen it and then started running down the street towards us, so it was a surprise uh, for them, uh, just not the way we, we wanted, we it wanted to, to go or <laughs> the way we had envisioned it to go. But nonetheless, the kids absolutely um, enjoyed that. So the next thing we did was prior to going out to your minor, we actually went to like Kmart uh, and Ikea. And Bunnings. Bunnings, just to try and get our heads around what we could actually use or store things in. So. Just so much. There's a, there's a lot on there. So we've kind of grabbed a few things here and there from Kmart and, and Ikea. And we'll, as we go, we'll, we'll probably show you those things later on. But main point of this video is just kind of give you a rundown of um, what's been happening uh, through this process for us. So uh, I guess we'll start off with the little issues we found on our maiden voyage. So one of the main things we found was when we initially plugged uh, the van into mains pressure. Uh, it actually caused the hot water to hot water pressure to overflow and it kept going with this thumping noise like it was really off-putting um, 
so it didn't sound right. Yeah, so the the first time we actually went, didn't know what it is, so we just left. It was late, so then the next morning we actually rang up Crusader and mentioned that it had something to do with the pressure releasing valve. Um, tried to reflush it and do all kinds of things there to get it going. Still didn't work. So uh, in the end, they're actually going to send us out a new pressure reducing valve thing. But being who I am, I wanted to kind of figure it out. So Googled a fair bit of it and actually found that this reducing pressure, you can actually open it up uh, and there's like a little spring in there. It just, we it found that it was a little bit stiff. So we put a little bit of, um, did it have any plumber's grease or some people use Vaseline. So in the end, I just had a little bit of inox, which is um, food grade type of stuff. Spray that in there and got the valve moving and put it back on and actually worked a treat. So, um, but mains pressure was totally different for us, we're used to being on water tanks uh, most of the time, so that was one issue. The next other issue we had is because we weren't on mains pressure, we actually found that the front water tank wasn't drawing any water. Uh, rear tank was fine, but the front water tank, just the pump kept cycling over and over and over again. Uh, so once again, got underneath <laughs> the van uh, and looked at one of the John Guest fittings and pulled that out to see if water was going through. Disconnected that and water just gushed out of the front. Uh, front tank, plugged it back in and there you go, it was working again. So it must have been some dirt or grit or something yeah, stuck cool. in there when they're drilling the holes into the tank. So um, not exactly sure of it, that's just my assumption and something was blocking there causing a bit of a, an air leak there. So, But it fixed it, so we didn't have an issue since. Okay. Yeah, so that that's there. Uh, other thing is because we've upgraded to Red Arc, we've noticed that it seems like the power points aren't showing the draw from the battery. Uh, still not sure what's going on there, but that's something we'll, we'll talk back to Crusader and we'll let you guys know uh, what's going on there. Uh, also tried the secondary solar input. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working properly as well, because uh, when you connect the secondary solar input, it kind of disconnects the main solar inputs on the roof, which is not ideal. We kind of wanted additional solar uh, in, in that case as well. What else we got here? Uh, the barbecue slide. So... <laughs> Barbecue slide, it's good, but it's also annoying. So when you go to open the slide and you pull it through, like fits the Weber quite well. Mm. Um, however, when you try to open the lid, it actually hits the back of the, the corner of the caravan. The caravan. So when that's hot and heating and the lid's hot, I wasn't sure if you could rest it up against that rubber. Is the rubber going to melt or, or whatever? So it's probably something there that we're going to have to try and modify or, or bring that out. But yeah, just a bit of a pain there. Like, just thought maybe, you, I don't know whether they could have done that better or whatever. But yeah. apart from that, barbecue slide definitely will need to be uh, refixed. Uh, one of the windows we've got just doesn't click in and click out. So there's two settings to to go open or really open, and it just doesn't engage that first level. Um, yeah. And then you get it once, and then it seems to work. So it's, it's a bit, a bit of a hit, yeah, yeah, hit and miss. Hit and miss. Not not sure, but you know, these are like little minor issues yeah. that we've got. Uh, one thing we found was the TV antenna. Oh. <laughs> so, never had a TV before. So, this particular case, we got it going. One night it was working. We're Beautifully. Like, Perfect. Beautiful. Uh, got to watch the cricket. And then, uh, next night we, we put it on and couldn't get signal. So, you know, Kel's standing there. I'm standing there trying to twist the thing to get the right signal. Go outside and, and have a look to see how all the other vans are pointing. And they matched. It was so confusing. Yeah. And then... Uh, in the end, I just turned off the ensuite light and picture became clear. So <laughs> so then we turn it back on again and the, the picture, yeah, went yeah. silly again. So there's something going on with the ensuite light. I don't know if there's a bit of a noise with the fan and so forth. But, you know, if, if you're having issues with your TV antenna, that just make sure one of the lights off. And we even upgraded to the wine guard because everyone says yeah. that was the better one. So we're a little bit disappointed when it wasn't working. So um, what else we got? Other little minor things are, you got little silicon marks around the place, so there's little bits of silicon uh, on, on panels and faces and on doors, so it's just a little rub off and it's gone. Other things are, you see the little bits of glue from when they're gluing uh, the edge stripping onto the boards, it's just, it's, it's real minor stuff, it's just, but it's just there, it's just little fine details that we go. Um, but our cupboards are white and the glue is blue, so you can see it um, pretty clearly. Yeah, uh, another thing I noticed was, the Red Arc uh, Red Vision hasn't been set up or configured properly. 
Uh, so I actually jumped in, downloaded the app and kind of played around with it. So they don't actually give you any wiring diagrams or anything to kind of understand how the band's wired. Some people want that. I want that because, you know, I kind of like to know what's going on. Um, so in the end, I've kind of reconfigured it, but just the way they've wired up the power to like, you know, the kids' beds and the toilets, they're all kind of linked. So you can't actually turn, um, you can actually turn the device off from your app, which is how I envision the whole system to work. And the lights are all on one circuit. So a little bit of a pain. I'm not sure if we can fix it, uh, but at the moment we'll, we'll just leave it as is because, you know, it's, um, it's working and it, it's okay. Uh, the bed handle. So when you lift the bed handle up, it's actually facing on the outside. So that gets a bit annoying, doesn't it? Yeah, you clip your knees on it um, with your wall. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, as you're brushing it, you clip your knees around. So uh, when we're doing handover, you actually mentioned to actually turn this and put it on the inside. We didn't think it would be a problem, but, um, but it is. But it is. So, um, and it's not hard to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll flip that around to the other side. Uh, the other thing uh, is is on the rear bar. We actually upgraded our bar to like a, to four arms as opposed to two, thinking we could put a little bit more weight on the back. Um, but we've noticed that you can't actually fully utilize the rear bar now because the lights are so low. So you can't put water tanks or two extra jerry cans on the back and jerry care holders because it sticks up. So now we've got to try and rework uh, how to do that. It's a little bit annoying. I don't know why the lights are so low, whether that's mandatory now or you have to be at a certain height. Um, but I don't believe that's how it was before. Could be wrong, um, but I'll have to work out how to rejig that uh, now. So. Positives. Now, there's yes. probably a lot of positives as well. So, uh, we actually love the colours, don't we? Love them. Yeah, I really do. I'm so glad we went with matte cupboards. So, being away for the weekend and the kids being, you know, kids not are teenage. Kids. kids are yeah. kids. And they touch everything and want to play with everything and fiddle with it. Our cupboards have come out unscathed. We can't see fingerprints on anything. Um, can't say the same for the fridge. Yeah, but the fridge in the front door. The fridge in the front door, um, they get fingerprints on them. But yeah, as far as the cupboards, I love them. Um, the colours, it just feels light and bright and airy. Yeah. Um, they did say the cupboards were anti-fingerprint something something, and I was kind of like really sceptical and yeah, right, we'll see how that goes. But it actually is, it isn't is, it? It yeah. is, yeah. Um, we also went with the black pack, so love the black pack. I think it, yeah. it worked really well with the colour scheme. Um now, we actually got customised um, bench tops and, and table. I'm really glad with that. That was sight unseen. We sort of went to Bunnings and found something we liked and went to Crusader and said, can you do something similar? And they said, yeah, how about this one? And we went, yeah, that kind of works. And that was sight unseen for 18 months. So that was a bit... Yeah, we weren't sure if we'd done the right thing. But yeah, go to Bunnings, find the little colour swatches that are around there and then you just send them off to Crusader and go, can you get this? Something similar. Yeah, we actually had a whole... What do you call that palette or color? We had table? a color palette. We couldn't yeah. get back to the the color choosing um, appointment. Uh, it just didn't work for us, so we had to do it all virtually, um, and that really worked for us. So I'm really happy with with the choices we made yeah. there as well. The other thing we did is real positives is we actually switched the kids' beds and the ensuite to the other side. Um, reason why we did that is because we wanted a bigger awning. So yeah, if we, we if we left the kids on I don't know, was it passenger side, if you want to say? Um, we couldn't have got a bigger awning, so that's why we moved it over. But in actual fact, we actually love it. Like, it's yeah. it's really having that bigger awning for us. We've never had such a big awning before, so it's kind of cool for us. Um, but having the kids on that side um, and swapping it, I, I think it's worked well yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, was it worth the extra weight for the composite? Yes, I think so. Yeah. The The... In the mornings, it was lovely in here in temperature, and then you go outside and the fresh air was nice, but then you come back in of an evening and it was so much cooler than outside. Um, so actually, we're, we're sitting in the van now, it's like 30 plus degrees, degrees today. We haven't got anything on no except fans. the things on. It yeah. is a little bit hot on here, um, but you know, like it's without that composite, I, I don't think we'd be able to no. sit in here just the way it is now. We've um, got one window and the door open. Yeah, so it's, it's something there that's, I definitely think it's worth the wait. Not having any kind of timber in the frames and stuff now, um, it's just a real bonus. So if you're going to get a van, make sure you try and get a composite van uh, as well. But definitely worth 
the extra weight and yep. the little bit of extra cost that was, um, even just from a resale value, we think as well. So also other things I love is the red arc with the inverter. Um, like basically now we yeah. can run everything. So we could turn on the aircon right now. We're just sitting, not connected up to the mains. And that was really cool. Uh, we yeah. tested that. Um, can't get a real feel for how well it's going. Like I said, because of the way the inverter points, whether they're actually tied into the red arc. Um, but overall, it's just been just been so nice to run all the appliances off your batteries and, and being totally off grid as opposed to being in caravan parks all the time. And it was really so. weird in the caravan park to turn everything off and go off grid in a caravan park when you had access to water and power. But for us, um, it was really to, to give the, the van a good test. Yeah. Um, and it came out okay, I think. Yeah. So real tests would be is really off off grid, off -grid. Um, but so far it, it's working a treat um, yeah. with the bigger batteries and so forth. So I think we're about 300 amp hours of lithium battery now, um, but we'll talk about all that in a, in a different video. So when we originally bought the van, um, you know, the van was built a certain way, but how we got the van now, uh, there's quite a few differences that we've yeah. noticed along the way. So I guess the first thing is we see on the forums is the ensuite sliding door. Um, it seems like Crusade is listening to the, these comments yeah. and reading these comments because the door that we've got, uh, they've actually changed the way the door stops on the ground. So there, there's no rubber marks now anymore. And they've got two little clips uh, in the back as well that yeah. the door clips in. So it doesn't actually yeah. move when you're traveling, doesn't it? Yeah, so a lot of people were saying that their, their door would come off the hinges when they're traveling and do a lot of damage uh, internally to the van. But I can't see that happening with our door, the way that they, it's now fixed in three places while you're driving. Um, and the rubber stopper is in a fixed position. So once you drop the, the pin down into that rubber stopper, um, I can't see it moving and bouncing yeah. around from there. Uh, other thing we notice, uh, the reading lights are a lot different. They're like this matte black finish yeah. with a, an LED haze on it. They look really cool. Like they really blend in, blend in well. Pack, yeah. Um, there's also like another led underneath the kitchen sink which we never noticed before so yeah. i don't know if it was there if it I don't wasn't know, there um, but i use it yeah but that I was that. that was pretty cool uh fire extinguisher bracing so once again i don't know if it's you guys commenting on facebook and stuff but you can actually see there's actually bracing now behind uh the fire extinguisher holder under the bed so um that's really cool Power points now are also flush mount. They're not on J boxes or junction boxes protruding um, past. They're actually recessed sitting in. Uh, what else is there? The water pump. So originally the water pump used to be underneath the fridge, but now it's on the outside. I've got mixed feelings about yeah. it being on the outside. Um, they've tried to cover it with the little brush thing. I, I know I've seen a lot of comments as well. People are going, why do they put it on the outside? It's da like not dangerous, but it's prone to damage, damage yeah. and so forth. So we'll see how we go. Um, the other thing is it is, it is noisy, isn't it? It is noisy. Yeah, we're, we're not used to it being a water pump that noisy. Maybe it's normal, maybe it's not, but a few other people... And considering in the trailer that we had, it was under our bed, and it wasn't even as noisy as this one, I don't think, now. Yeah. Um, other things are the washing machines are a different brand now uh, as well. It used to be, I think, NCE, and now it's a different... I'm not sure what the brand is now. Do you remember? Fresca. Fresca, but that. yeah, we'll, we'll put it in the comments or whatever. Uh, the new I did brand. use it, and it works. Um, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Um... What else is there? The awning. Originally, I wanted a Dometic awning. It's told it was going to be Dometic, um, but when we got the van, it's actually Aussie Traveller. So, not sure what the differences are between. The Aussie Traveller seems to be doing its job, so we'll see how that holds up. Um, like I said, I know there's supply issues going on, so, um, but at least we've got an awning. I think there was at one stage people weren't even getting awnings put on their vans, so uh, we've got that. Uh, the TV is a different brand. It wasn't the same as what was there. It's actually a little bit, not intuitive to use. I call myself pretty tech savvy mm. when I can pick things up and kind of figure it out, but I'm kind of struggling to try and, and work it out a little bit and control it. Um, I'm also a male that doesn't read manuals, so that's another thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not quite intuitive as you, as you expect, but it does its job. It's got all the little apps and, and Netflix and YouTube and so forth. So 
um, that's okay. Uh, what else is different? So the lounge and the bed head stitching is different. Um, so when we were choosing a van, we, we were going for, for a higher end finish, which I'm really happy with. The van has that, that finish still on it. Um, but yeah, just little differences. So the, the lounge and the bed head now seem to have a double stitch, which gives it a, I don't know, more luxurious sort of feel, doesn't it? I, yeah. I quite like it. Used to be, I'm pretty sure the other ones were just a flat, but yeah, it just, just makes it feel, yeah, yeah. It makes it feel next, a little bit different, a little bit yeah. next, next level. Um, position of bed fans is different. I'm not sure if you can see it behind us, but they're now sitting, uh, behind the bed. Whereas before they were outside, uh, near the, up near the, the doors up on the walls. Uh, not really sure whether I like that or not. So, you know, we really never used the fans over the weekend. So, no. nah, um, but that's different. Other things are, was the gas point for the barbecues actually being relocated. So where it was before I actually requested to move it, but it seems like once again, feedback, I've actually moved it closer to the barbecue slide. So, um, props up to Crusader for listening to customer feedback. Okay, so here's some notes or observations that yep. we've seen. So, um, one of them is, what is it? We tried to use these sticky hooks, didn't we? Yeah, so to put hooks around um, to hang towels and um, appliances, different things like that. We noticed that um, on porous surfaces, like the what would you call it? The painted timber or whatever it is. It's like a laminate. It's got this porous surface into it. Um, we got some black, matte black hooks from Bunnings and they just didn't stick. They just refused to stick um, and carry any weight on them. So then when we switched to the command hooks. Or 3M. The 3M branded brand, stuff, yeah. They did stick, although it took a couple of attempts uh, yeah. to get that right. They seem to work a lot better, the branded, um, yeah. branded double-sided tape. So... We, yeah, yeah, we sort of thought, well, they match, we'll try them. They're a bit cheaper, you know, different brand. Well, they can't be that bad. Um, they're just different. They just don't like it. They do stick well to the, the composite, the shiny surfaces, uh, just not the, the more timber laminate type surface. Yeah. Um, next thing on is the washing machine. So washing machine you found work really well. Yep. However, when you're using the washing machine, it is quite noisy and it does rock the van. So, um, not just, sure if that's normal. We've not had a washing machine while we travel before. So the novelty of it is fantastic. I love the ability to be able to, you know, throw, throw a load of washing on. I didn't realize it was so, um, yeah, it would vibrate so much. Yeah. So it actually rocks the van. So just be careful of when you're using your washing machine, one, because it's too noisy and two, because people might think someone else is going on. Um, so. That's a different story. Okay. Uh, next thing is kids lights. So if the kids lights are on, especially the, the if you've got three bunks, the top one, if that gets left on, there's no way you're going to reach that light. Without you have, climbing up there. You have to jump up or send one of the kids up there. Um, yeah, it's really painful yeah, to reach. Yeah, it's just the angle is wrong. Uh, yeah, you can't get there. Yeah. The other thing is the awning strap. So we actually found our awning strap came loose from the awning. Not sure how it happened, but you know, whether it's just slid out of the sail track. So just be careful of that awning strap uh, as well, because we have heard of people losing awning straps before or whatever, but we just thought, how could you lose an awning strap? But Ours there you go. Out. Yeah, pretty easy. Uh, short mattress. So <laughs> we're not tall or short by average height. any yeah. means. Uh, I think we're about 180 centimeters tall. Um, but our feet uh, were hanging over. Our feet, yeah, they were hanging over the edge of the bed. So the first night was a little bit weird. I'm not sure if it's because of the angle of the bed or the bed head, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the where the bed head comes down the front of the van, um, we just are not sleeping high close enough to the bed head. Perhaps I'm not sure. Yeah. So we had a, a body pillow. So the next night we actually pushed the bed forward and shoved the body pillow uh, between the bed head and the top of the mattress. And I just shoved everything forward and that worked really yep. well for us. So yep. probably just going to leave a pillow stuck behind there, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, we have put toppers and, um, yeah, what are they called? Pillow. Memory foam. Memory foam there. on our mattress because we have heard um, that the, the standard mattress can be quite uncomfortable. And we had that in the trailer anyway, so we've just added it and it does make yeah, a really comfortable we've sleep. We've just brought it across, so um what else is there oh the tv light so at night time the there's a little red led power uh power light on on the tv there where you plug it into the dc socket actually i think it's on the dc cigarette light socket itself. that is super bright um it's actually really bright that kind of woke me up 
<laughs> she's thinking it was daylight. So uh, some people might like it. Some people I don't hate it. Um, so we actually were lucky enough that it's on the red arc, so we could just turn that TV off PowerPoint from the app. Um, but it's just something to be yeah. to be uh, cautious of, I guess. Uh, what else have we got here? Red Arc Inverter, not switching. Oh, so, so Red Arc Inverter, it doesn't actually have an AC auto switch function. So previous ones I've used before are like projector or inner drive. When you plug into mains, it actually switches over automatically. With the Red Arc, for some reason, you've got to go out and put a circuit breaker or a, a manual switch override in there. Um, so for for this particular case, when you want to use the inverter or battery power, you've actually got to go to the circuit breaker and flick a switch. So I'm not sure if this is standard or something else has gone amiss, but all all reports reading online, it looks like that's just the case. So uh, we've got shower door. Yeah, so the kids are having a shower. One of the kids was having a shower and help, I can't get out. We thought, well, what's going on? How can you not get out of the shower? Anyway, it turns out that there's a, a little black uh, clip on the top of the shower door that we, we just popped it out and that allowed the door to swing freely So we're not sure if that is actually for travel or not But it'll just I'll just add it to the travel checklist that we just pop that back in and and twist the lock on the door uh, We didn't seem to have any trouble when we had showers, but did, the kids just it, could it not was, get it open. It was stiff. I thought oh geez, this is a little bit stiff to push I just thought it was normal. I actually thought it was better because it wasn't going to come loose during yeah. travel um, But turns yeah, out just there's a, a little, little plastic clip in the top yeah. frame um, this is another thing that kind of annoyed me was when you buy the van and you rock up, uh, you don't actually get D shackles. So, you know, I thought I had to bring D shackles. It's just the back of my mind. If I just bring some D shackles, but in the end, mine weren't rated or, yeah. or rated enough. So, I actually had to purchase D shackles um, from Crusader. So, I think they're about five bucks each. Um, but I just thought, for the sake of five bucks, Crusader, why don't you just chuck them on? You know, like. Here I am talking about a part that costs probably you know less than five dollars, and it just adds to the whole experience of such a small little part. Just throw it in, uh, and I I know it all adds up, but when you're spending that much money in a van, you just expect a little five dollar D shackle uh, just to be there. You don't have to worry about it. Other things are we didn't know is that you actually need a do not overtake turning sign. Um, I think it's over twelve and a half meters combined yeah. length total length you must have a do not overtake sign yeah so we had to we got one of those as well um to stick on the van uh what else not is expensive there? i think it was about ten dollars or something from bcf like it wasn't yeah it was not a huge expensive. not a huge cost but yeah just didn't realize it yep. was on i don't like the look of them but anyway you gotta have them on um oh the switches so this is another differences that we noticed oh, yeah. so crusader actually now print what all the switches are and what the functions are Labeling. on the on the light switch was really cool that's something that wasn't there before and i guess a lot of people were trying to figure out they make little stickers and little decals that they stick on themselves yeah but now it comes um on their already done so there you go once again keep writing these things on facebook because i know people are actually or crusader is actually monitoring and watching these just from what we've seen in the past and they act on the feedback months, which is nice so um so that's pretty cool so what's next so we've got our christmas trip coming up um so we'll start planning for that there's quite a few little mods and things that we've noticed that we needed to do um you know like curtains fly screens little, fire hooks, cracks, little hooks just trying to figure out all the containers and stuff to make sure it doesn't um move around so i guess that's a, a work in progress that thing so there'll be more trips to Kmart and i guess ikea to try and find the right little box or whatever to fit in the right compartment so but I guess when we're finished and finished setting everything up, not that I think we'll ever be, uh, yeah. but we'll do another video showing what we've used and where we've put it and, and how it's all come together. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're really excited about this yeah. new or well, next venture for us being in a caravan as opposed to being in a camper trailer. So kids love it. Absolutely, absolutely love, love it. it. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great thing now. And just the ease for us and the simplicity of just rocking up and everything's kind of done is... We really nice. enjoy that. So basically that's it for this video. Uh, if you found this video informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so you get notified when we release another video. You know, always checking out new sites and playing around with different gear and equipment. Uh, so until next time. See ya. See ya.